All right. Well, welcome back to City Line. Joining me now is Melissa McGinnis, the Historic and Cultural Resource Administrator for Metro Parks Tacoma. And welcome, Melissa. So uh, why write books about history of Tacoma's parks? Um, because it's exciting, it's fun, it's interesting, and people want to know. Um, people enjoy learning the story behind your neighborhood park. Where did it get its name? How old is it? You know, what, all that sort of stuff. So it, that piece of it um, is, is just fun. It's what I get to do is talk about the history of parks all day. But um, what really kicked off the book writing was the centennial of uh, Metro Parks Tacoma's existence. Uh, we're the first park district in the state of Washington, and we were established in 1907. So in 2007, we were trying to figure out a way to commemorate our 100 years of history and all these great stories and people that had involved with the parks over the years. And so we came across this program um, through Arcadia Publishing called the Images of America series. And so we started out by writing... Um, um, books. Uh, our first book is simply Tacoma's Parks, and that's where we started there. And you can see some of the pictures coming across. Um, this was a statue that was in Wright Park for many years. Unfortunately, uh, was um, taken out by vandals in the 1970s. We still have the fountain, but we don't have the statue anymore. Um, so um, we started, like say, with Tacoma's Parks, and then that was very well received and moved on to um, Next was Wright Park when all the improvements happened at Wright Park and then Point Defiance Park because you, how can you not do a book on Point Defiance Park? Right, right. Now you mentioned your co-author. Who's, who's My co-author, um, I actually, Doreen um, Beard and I met when I first came to Tacoma uh, 27 years ago. Uh, she was the curator out at Fort Nisqually. She's a consummate historian. And uh, so as we started researching the Point Defiance's history for its centennial, centennial in 05, um, she was just a natural to go to and because uh, these are, took a lot of time, a lot of work and so it was nice having someone to bounce ideas off of who really had a, a real great depth of understanding of Tacoma's Park. So she and I worked together on all three of the, of the volumes. Excellent. Now, if, if you look at it and say from a size standpoint, it makes sense to go to Wright Park and Point Defiance Park as the the next two in the series, right? Um, um, but is that uh, that's just from an outsider looking at it? Uh, was that the reason why? It well, th that was part of the reason why. And the other thing with the Images of America series, and there's several of these written um, by different authors here in Tacoma. There's one on South Tacoma and Old Town and Proctor District. There's quite a few of them. Uh, the publishing company has a criteria. And I can't remember the exact number, but you have to have at least like 210 to 240 images, oh. historic images. And so um, many of our smaller parks, there's just no way I could ever come up with enough images to do a specific park, which is why the Tacoma Parks book is great, because we did all the original eight Tacoma parks when Park District was established, and then we were able to throw in fun little parks that have a fun story, but they don't have 200 pictures, mm. uh, like Manitou Park. Um, it was uh, purchased by the Park District in the 20s when the Northern Pacific Railroad had moved their shops out to South Tacoma, so people started moving out there, and Thank goodness those early park board commissioners went, oh my gosh, this land's getting expensive. Mm -hmm. So if we're ever going to have a park here, we better buy the land. So that's what they did. They bought the property in South Tacoma, but they didn't really have any money to make it a park. So it was actually a KOA. It was a... Um, because uh, that was the route to the ocean, and so everybody stopped, and they have Camp great ocean. records, and there's great photographs, all these cars parked under the trees, and then when the park district got enough money to turn it into a park, they closed down the KOA business and converted it to a park. So not 200 images, but still a great story, so we wanted to include those sorts of things in the Tacoma Parks book. So we have, oh, I think there's 20 or 30 parks we talk about, plus the um, activities like sports that the park district is known for. You know, we've got pictures of Peckfield in the early days and, um, you know, Heidelberg when it got started and Meadow Park and all that sort of stuff. Very fun. Now, I noticed one of the images that we had up was a uh, uh, the the trolley or the streetcar street car. up at Point Defiance. Defiance, right. saw the pagoda in the background, and which is still there. And yes. Some of the tracks are still there, but people probably that haven't lived here or don't know the history, man, that's some fascinating history there. And it is great. And if I may, I would like to thank a gentleman by the name of Tom Stanger mm -hmm. for that picture. Um, it is my all-time quintessential best pagoda picture, and Tom owns it, and he's been so generous to let us use it in the book and on any time we're talking about the history of the pagoda because 
like you say, most people don't realize it started as, as far as I'm concerned, uh, Tacoma's fanciest streetcar station. Uh, you know, Union Station gets it for the trains, yeah. but I think the Pagoda gets it for the streetcars. Sure. And it served as a streetcar station until they left, and then it became a bus stop. Again, the fanciest bus stop in Tacoma until the 60s, and that's when it was converted to, um, thanks to the uh, Capital District Garden Clubs, they helped save it. Um, and uh, just a little fun story about that one, too, is with a new aquarium coming into Point Defiance Park right now, there's been a lot of interest in the 1960s aquarium, which it's replacing, which the 60s aquarium replaced one that was down on the waterfront. And when they started looking for places to move the aquarium from the waterfront, the first place they looked at was turning the pagoda into the new aquarium. And they actually did structural analysis. Could the weight of all those tanks full of fish be held by the, the floor there in the pagoda? Um, so I don't know about you, but I'm glad they didn't do that and they moved it up the hill and joined it to the zoo instead. I think that was a better call. Exactly, exactly. Now, you know, listening to you, you just, it's infectious. The, uh, <laughs> the you know, historic and the value of, of, of all of that. Um, but what was the most fun about writing the, the books in the Image of America series? You know, I have to tell you, one of my favorite parts was, uh, when we did the first book, which was the Tacoma Parks book, was um, there was an article, I think it was Kathleen Merriman that wrote it for us in the News Tribune, and said, hey, Metro Parks is trying to learn more about its story. If you've got a story to tell, share a story with us. Mm -hmm. And so we got letters, we got pictures um, from all kinds of people, and that was one of my greatest joys, was talking to these people, because they usually leave me their phone number if you want to know more. And there was um, one lady, oh, and I think her name was Virginia, um, was in her 80s, and she wrote me all about her day camp activities at Lincoln Park. This woman's in her 80s, and she remembered the name of her camp leader. Wow. And I was like, oh my God. So now when I talk to the new camp leaders that are coming in for our day camps and things like that, I always try to impress upon them what an impact they can have on a child. Mm -hmm. um, this woman's in her 80s. She can tell me who ran her day camp when she went to Lincoln Park Day Camp. Wow. And then the other thing she told me about was a bike trip she went on with um, the park district. Mm -hmm. And I was like, and she said, we went over to Twana State Park on the Hood Canal. And I'm like, okay, you got to be confusing something here, right? <laughs> and um, so then I'm looking through all the pictures in our files, and by golly, there is a whole scrapbook documenting that bike trip across the brand new Narrows Bridge. Oh, wow. Yes, and the park district, that's our, our truck right there loaded up with their supplies. <laughs> and these kids rode from Tacoma to Twana State Park on these big one gear fat tired bicycles. And she told me their bottoms got a little sore so they'd get the pillows out of the truck and put the pillows on their seat so it'd be more comfortable to ride. <laughs> And I was so excited that here I found the picture to match the story. Mm -hmm. And we were able to share that with everybody, and her story will be saved in perpetuity. So that's awesome. what's, that was the most fun, yeah. those sorts of things. Yeah. Very good. All right, well then, conversely, what was the greatest challenge in writing these? Making the cuts. Oh. Oh, Doreen and I would get together on weekends in one of the big conference rooms at the Park District, and we'd bring out all our pictures. And trying to winnow down those photographs mm -hmm. to the ones that make it in the book. And we would go, but I love this picture, but I love this picture. And it's like, but, but you're also trying to tell a story. And so if you just do a random collection of cool pictures, you're not really telling the story. You're not connecting A to B to C and how did this happen. So sometimes you had to go, okay, it's not as great a picture, but it it's what we need to help tell our story. And on the floor, because we made Xerox copies, and so we're, we're constantly moving and shuffling, and then they go, okay, I can give up this one. <laughs> or a, a story. Good problem, a good problem to it's have. It's a good problem. And then um, I know you're going to have um, Brian Kamins on here soon. Um, and I remember offering Brian, a, he works at the Northwest Room, and a bounty on finding me a picture of the conservatory under construction. No one has ever been able to find me a picture of the conservatory under construction. So there was also those frustrations of the pictures. You just, oh, please, I want that picture. And searching everybody's archives, putting the word out through the ephemera collectors here in Tacoma, the postcard collectors. I haven't found that one yet. So if anybody in your audience finds one, just know that we are still seeking a photograph of the, of the I would like to see how they built it. In Wright Park. In, in, yeah, the conservatory yeah. in Wright Park. Yeah, I'd love to see how they built that. Nice. 
Well, um, I've been told there's some more images. And oh, okay, you, you sure. Can describe them to us. Oh, today. this is a great one too. This one again, you know, these postcard collectors—they're great people. Um, Tom Stanger also bought this picture because he bought it simply because it said Tacoma on it. Hmm. He didn't have any idea where it was, what it was, but this is Ferry Park. This is Tacoma's first park up in the hilltop. It was uh, donated to the park uh, to the city in 1883. And Mr. Ferry also donated the statues for Wright Park. So the, the, the dancing girls and the lions and the fisherman's daughter in the pond, those were, yeah, there's more of Mr. Ferry's statues. And so they were so well received in Wright Park that he went and got statues for Ferry Park. And there were five statues and photographs of only three of them have been found. And that one with the lion with the man, that was right in the middle of Ferry Park uh, mm -hmm. until the 1920s. And then the one of the lions, of course, shows that Yakima Avenue used to be a roadway right through the middle of Wright Park originally. Uh -huh. And so the lions now have been scooted in. This one, thanks to the uh, staff at Annie Wright School, they helped us a lot with the Wright Park book because Annie White was originally built right next to Point Defiance Park, where the uh, Rhine Garden is today, you know, that little triangle, that odd little piece of property, that's where the original Annie Wright was built. And it was a big wooden structure. And for their May Day celebration, they'd always come over and plant a tree in Wright Park. and. These little girls, and the, the one on the, on the right with these bows, these outrageous bows, I have pictures of my grandmother with the same sort of thing. So <laughs> they were very generous with us sharing their images in the archives at Annie Wright. And then, of course, this is um, one of the many, 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 many uh, fishing derbies at Point Defiance Park over the years. This one's kind of fun because you see, if you look in the audience of the boys, you'll see lots of sailors' hats. So this is a wartime picture. Mm -hmm. And I actually met a gentleman uh, recently who's in his 90s now who worked at the boathouse. And um, he talked to, told me when he was a young man working there in his teens before he could actually go join the war, World War II, all he wanted was to score one of those sailor's caps. And when any of the ships would come into Tacoma, he'd go down and he never could get anybody to give him a hat. So he had to join the Navy to finally get his sailor's hats. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, lots and lots of great stories. And um, fishing derbies were a huge thing down there for kids. Father and son, father and daughter, you know, mother and son, you know, every kind of fishing derby imaginable. So there are a lot of photos of those. And then they continue today. So it's kind of a fun tradition to, to look back upon. Great. Now, uh, where can people get access to these books? Um, basically, they're all available. Uh, well, the Wright Park one you can almost always find at um, the conservatory in Wright Park because they have a gift shop right there, so they carry that one. There are also, um, the Northwestern will have them. Um, if you just want to check one out, the library has copies of everything. Um, King's Books generally carries them, as well as in Point Defiance, the Fort Nisqually gift shop, the, the Boathouse Marina carries them, as well as the Visitor Center when it's open in the summertime. So um, they're available in numerous outlets, and occasionally at Costco. Um, but you have to dig through those to find the right one you want. So. Very but there's a but I, if you love local history, they are great books because they are photo histories, and um, if you flip through any of them, no matter what part of town, there's even a cemeteries of tour, uh, book um, in this series of Tacoma cemeteries, and there's just always something that strikes your fancy. You go, oh, I know that intersection. Oh, I always wondered how that got there. You know, so they're they're great little books, and they're done by all local authors who have worked closely with the community for donated photos like we did, as well as the collection at the Northwest Room, yay Northwest Room, fabulous photo collection, State Historical Society, University of Washington, there's lots of great images. And pulling them all together in one nice little packet is, is a great way to go. Very nice. Well, we've run out of time, Melissa, but, uh, and everybody, Melissa McGinnis, the Historic and Cultural Resource Administrator, Metro Parks Tacoma, her last day. We Tomorrow. congratulate you and thank you for your service to the thank community you. and hope that you'll uh, continue in a volunteer capacity somewhere. And oh, I am already talked to somebody yesterday about that. So, yeah, you can't get rid of me that easy. Very good. <laughs> well, we look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you very much. All right. And we'll be back with more coming up next, uh, Showtime in Tacoma. Stay with us.